welcome. We're gonna talk about love today. It's day 16 of the Adventure of Appreciation calendar and you are here. My name is Theo Flo, you know me. I've been talking to you for 16 days now, 15 days. And if you have participated, you will hopefully have benefited a lot from these self-development tools that I've given you, which has to do with how you can participate in life in a more loving, harmonious, and to your liking way. It's how to become an emotional, uh, an emotional alchemist and a vibrational weightlifter. It's as if you uh, develop your faculties of relating to people in a more uh, harmonious way. And also, like the last video, if you watched yesterday, video did you, did, you did you watch it did you watch it did you watch it did you watch it i hope you watched it because i gave you some incredible questions that have been serving me for a long time and those questions are something you use when life gets hard when you feel less than good that is when you use these tools it is very powerful it helps you to rise up wherever you need to rise up in your life today we're gonna ask ourselves one of the most incredible philosophical question. It has to do with love. And, uh, you know, it's right up there with some of the most amazing questions uh, we have in philosophy. For example, who, who am I? You know, that's a, one of the greatest philosophical questions ever. Who are, who are you? And, you know, other questions like, uh, where are we going? Where are we truly going? And why are you here? Why are you here? These are incredibly fascinating philosophical questions. Now today we're going to ask another question that has been, uh, you know, asked in, in literature for a long time. It's been infused into art and it has even had songs created about it. And here is the question. What is love? And no, this is not going to be uh, about a baby hurting you. Uh, no, baby don't hurt me. No, what is love? I like actually asking that question. Before I offer you any type of input, uh, perspective, or hopefully something that may inspire and illuminate parts of your mind that you haven't illuminated for a long time, before I do that, or offer my help to do that if you allow it, let yourself discover your personal answer. My father always told me that there are as many viewpoints in this world as there are people. There's as many spiritual, um, you know, pathways as there are conscious points of uh, observation. There are as many meanings and viewpoints as there are people. This is why it's so important, especially when we talk about something as personal as your internal and therefore becoming external emotional life, your feelings. I'm just here to assist you on reframing and rediscovering yourself, shedding whatever you were for the benefit of all that you can be. Now, let's ask ourselves, what is love? Pause. Did you pause? Did you take a moment to, to think about this for yourself? It's funny, I actually asked uh, a few of my friends and uh, in my online accounts, what is your favorite feeling? And I thought, for me, you know, if I just gave them the answer, it would be obviously for me love. I love love. I, I mean, love to me is a word that represents so much and is very different than what other people may put into the word love. Uh, a friend of mine, Osa, she wrote a beautiful uh, question on Facebook where she asked, what is love? And I viewed all the answers and there are so many different perspectives. There is a lot of hurt. There is a lot of resistance. There is a lot of different types of emotions when it comes to reviewing such a question as what is love. So when I ask people, what is your favorite emotion? I, I hoped someone would say love, but it didn't really matter. I was just curious about what they would say. And they, to my surprise, no one said love. I got a, a, a handful of beautiful answers, like um, the peace in oneself and with others. A beautiful answer by a friend uh, named Reno. A wise, magnificent human being. 
and uh, some other friends, actually two of them, would say gratefulness from different social medias where I got the response. Gratefulness, to be grateful. And another girl, uh, she wrote passion, you know, passion. Oh, that's my favorite emotion because it feels like energy in motion, like diving into the ocean, blossoming up like a flower of liquid crystalline love, whatever. I got a lot of beautiful answers. So, but none of them were love. No, no, none would say love, but they all reminded me of love. It reminded me of my own answer. Mine isn't the correct one, but you know, for me personally, the answer is my answer. It is my answer. I don't need anyone. <laughs> and I say this because maybe you have had situations in your life where you have needed others to acknowledge your perspective and to be agreeable, to agree with it. I know that I have. Oh my God, it's obvious that I have. I'm trying my best now to understand that, hey, we are all who we are, you know? We, we can all be as different as we want. It's perfectly fine to disagree with each other. But if you find your own foundation, your fundamental, um, your fundamental place to come from, everything resolves. And for me, that foundation, that place that I'm now choosing to master and come from is universal love, you know? That is all that matters to me now. Because in that, here is my perspective on love since I promised you to give you that. And right now is the time to pause and think for yourself and find your own answer. Uh, I suggest you do it because it's what may benefit you the most because it's self-discovery. But here is my perspective, if I may offer it for you. May I? Are you willing? Are you open? Can it inspire you? Can it benefit you? Up to you. Thank you. So, love for me can be described as the lack of resistance. That's one way to see it. It's the lack of any resistance, really, any, especially any emotional resistance. What I notice is that love is a purely giving force. Love's nature is to love. It's a verb, love, you know, to love. And for me, you know, you can, you can have love in any type of situation. You can have it in romantic relationships, which many people think of. You can have it in spiritual relationships. You can have it with uh, things. <laughs> you can have it with yourself. Um, yeah, you can have it with friends. You can have it with family. You can have it with pets. You can have it with flowers, other living creatures, you know. You can have it, you can, you can put love into anything and it will improve it. That is a friend of mine actually called love. The Everything is soluble in love. Everything is soluble, which means that it, it can come into love and it dissolves into love. This is the beauty. When you have a purely giving love force, it's a field that is like a sun. It keeps giving. It's an expansionness to its nature. Whenever something comes close to expansion, it's like a reversed black hole. You know, a black hole sucks in all light and it sucks in so fast that light doesn't escape. So it's literally taking light in at the speed of light or, or higher or, or possibly higher. But if you look at the reverse, you have like a, a love hole <laughs> or a love portal or a sun, you know? a luminescent object. That is what love looks like in, in, in my experience. And it keeps giving, it keeps loving. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, what you call it, like a cyclical thing, you know? Because love in its nature loves all that is. It includes everything, all everything. If love meets you, it will love you. So it's like a gravitational pull. For me, you know, I've, I've, I've described love as relational magnetism. When it comes to relationships, it's a magnetic force, you know? It just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so pleasurable. It's so delightful. It, it, it brings gifts in abundance. 
the first, I mean, when you merge with the power of love, with you, when you merge with a, 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 a sphere of love, you can't help but feel love. You can't meet love without becoming love. It's our nature, in my experience. It's your nature. It's the way our body functions at its optimal level, which is one of the many reasons for why I choose to focus so much upon universal love. Universal love, unconditional love, cosmic love, inner peace, outer happiness, you know, whatever you want to call it. Gratitude, appreciation. Hmm. These are all descriptions of the same thing in my experience or in our experience. Now, why do I keep defining these as personal experiences? It's literally just to not step on your toes. It's, it's to not offend anyone. It's to acknowledge the fact that we have parallel realities overlapping, meeting in these common realities. Like right now, we are in a common reality, observing each other. So I, I, I used to say, this is my personal viewpoint only because I've had a lot of experience with people not enjoying feeling like they don't have their own experience, their own perspective. You know, it's very soothing for the ego to, to have an anchor point, like this is me, now I know who I am, and I don't have to pretend that someone has influence over me. I had a long period of my life where I didn't like learning from others, because if I did, that meant that they were better than me and it has nothing to do with that at all it's it's when you are actually able you're 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 always capable but it's when you are ready and open to to feel a certain flavor of love that you are ready to learn because you, you, you can't learn if you're shut off if you have resistance you can't learn if you have resistance you can't love you see, love flows like water. It's a beautiful thing. As, I, as my friend said, everything is soluble in love. Love dissolves everything. It resolves everything. And water is called the, 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 the dissolver of everything and the solution of life. Everything can be solved in water is one perception. So it's funny, if you throw a rock in a river, Water doesn't meet the rock and say, what the hell? What is this rock doing here? It doesn't stop, point fingers at the rock and say, remove this rock immediately. I don't like this rock, take it out of my water. You know, rock, the, uh, water doesn't have an issue with the rock. And the rock doesn't seem to have an issue with the water. They just perfectly harmonize as we see in nature all the time. And uh, water just keeps flowing. You know, that's the nature of water. It's a fluid, beautiful, amazing force. And uh, it reminds me so much of love. When water meets water, it becomes more water. You know, it's, it's a camaraderie. It's like a hand reaching out and saying, hey, do you want to hold my hand? I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I'm your friend. You know, we're inherently of the same. And you know what? You are 70% water, I am 70% water. So we're basically the same. Which, which makes it easier to acknowledge that, hey, you are 70% love, I am 70% love. In a way, you know, because water acts very similar to love. Yeah. I, that's what I wanted to share today. I could go on and on and on on this topic. Tell me if you enjoy it. Tell me if you don't enjoy it. Uh, don't tell me anything if you don't want to tell me anything. Be you, whatever, be true to you. What is love for you? What happens when you travel at the speed of love, where you don't have any resistance anymore, and the speed is automatic. You transcend time space, move faster than the speed of light, and you become the speed of love. <laughs> Enjoy. I love you. Have a great day. I hope to see you tomorrow. If not, I hope you see you. <laughs>